And it doesn't have to be a scary question like, oh, I wonder what God wants to do by means of me. Am I going to have to go to dental school? Oh, or do something I don't want to do for a living? Or move to a city I don't like? Or marry somebody I can't stand? Of course not. I mean, you can, but it's not that detailed. It's not that that specific, but it's grand and it's big and it's beautiful. And the question we ask, the way we start to tap into that is to ask ourselves, the wisdom in us, what would I love to do? What would I love to do? If I ask you right now, what would you love to do? Something comes into your mind immediately, doesn't it? And maybe it's outrageous. Like, I want to quit my job and sit on the beach for the rest of my life. Okay? Sounds good, doesn't it? I like that one. Okay. But if you ask yourself, what would I love to do? How do you answer that? Well, maybe it's, I would love to write a book. I would love to sing in a club. I would love to swim the English Channel. What would you love to do? I would love to spend a summer in Italy. I would love to help underprivileged children. I would love to fund scholarships for middle-aged women returning to school after raising their families. What would you love to do? But the question you ask yourself is, what would I love to do? And there's not just one thing, but that's a place to start. And there's not just one thing because our grand vision for our life includes every area. If you do have a vision to spend the summer in Italy, what happens? Immediately a voice comes in and says, well, you can't do that, you have to work. You only have five weekdays of paid vacation. How are you gonna spend two and a half months in Italy? But if that's part of your vision, the vision includes every piece because when we are living the dream it presumes what that we have the time to do it the health to enjoy it certainly the money to enjoy it and wonderful people with whom to enjoy it so as long as we're visioning let's vision for wonderful not not wonderful people to spend our time with don't don't take somebody you don't enjoy being with for the summer to italy Maybe your boss lets you work remotely. You don't have to know all the details, okay? Because all of that is already decided. It's already decided. So once we ask ourselves, what would I love to do? The next step is to understand that whatever that vision is, it's God ordained. I'm not saying it's predetermined. Okay, there's a difference. It's not that God has a plan for one person to be a professional athlete and another person to be a school teacher and a, another person to be an accountant. We get to fill in those blanks. It's, it's bigger than that. So it's God ordained. Charles Fillmore taught that we come into this world with a God imprint on our super consciousness. That part of us that is so tapped into the eternal wisdom that we already know everything. You know, and as we grow, we move further and further away from that, but that information is always there. It is imprinted on our consciousness. That's our vision. It's God ordained. Okay. What do we do with that? As we start to get in touch with it, what do we do with it? We start saying to our dream, to the vision itself, because the one I love lives inside of you, I lean as close to you as I can. Remember, it's a code. Because the infinite intelligence of the universe lives inside my vision, because if it didn't, I wouldn't be able to have that vision, but because it does and because I know it does, I lean into the reality of it the present moment existence of it, and everything that goes along with that, I lean into it. And we can apply that code, that scripture, to every area of our experience. 
Now, we have to recognize that our progression to this higher love includes love of others, love of self, and love of God. It couldn't very well leave all that out, could it? So everyone is involved. Everyone is a crucial part of where we're going. Now, what's the most powerful is when we are gathered, like this morning, with people of like mind, and we make a commitment, each of us to ourselves, that, yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to live my dream. I'm going to manifest my vision. And there's power in numbers. That consciousness is contagious. It really, really and truly is. So we can test along the way. We can test whether our vision that we're saying is the highest form of love, our deciding to live it and fall in love with being it, doing it. Okay, does it benefit us directly? Does it glorify God? And does it bless other people? And I'm telling you, if it's your vision, the answer is yes to all three of those things. We might have to dig deep to find some answers at first, but then that information just opens up to us in ways perhaps we didn't expect. So let's apply the code. There's a handout. I'm not asking you to fill it out right now. Take it home, make some copies. If, if you like the idea of getting in touch with your vision, use the sheet. And let's look at the three major areas of life, health, wealth, and relationships. But this is what it would look like when you do this at home. Okay, what is your vision for health? Right off the bat, something has to come to your mind. Even if you are young and able-bodied and full of energy and Nothing is, quote, wrong with you. There's always a greater vision of health. What is your vision of health? Is it to walk without a cane or hike or just have more sustained energy or heal a condition someone has called a disease? What is your vision for health? I don't know what it is, but I know everybody has one, no matter what your level of health at this moment. So we apply the code. Because divine love lives inside my vision of health, I lean as close to it as I can. What does that mean? It will be different for everybody. What would it mean to today lean into your vision of health? If your vision is to hike Mission Peak, then maybe today leaning into that means going, for, it's a gorgeous day, turn off the TV, hello, and walk around the block. But it's the Super Bowl. Okay, there's another one right every year. And your vision is now. There's halftime. Your vision, and there's halftime. But there's Madonna. So we start by listing five ways our vision of health benefits us directly. Well, that's easy. Start walking, taking better care of yourself, eating better, uh, maybe not being on medication. I don't know. There are easily five or 500 or 5,000 ways that your vision for health benefits you directly. But there are five million in the eternal mind that, that you don't know yet. And as you open up to that information, it comes in. Okay. List five ways your vision of health glorifies God. Well, there's one major one, which is when we live in health as health, we are being God in action because spirit is health. It's not healthy. Spirit is health. And our thriving physical self is a reflection of our inner thriving, isn't it? And there are other ways. There are other ways. I don't know what they are for you. Okay. And then list five ways your vision of health blesses others. You know who comes to mind for me with that is Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Who was diagnosed with cancer the first time he was only 25 years old. And he was told he had less than a 40% chance of survival. Huh. Right. Did he buy into that? No. And then he went on to break records. He won, what, seven Tour de France in a row? Now there's something worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> And now we have the Live Strong Foundation, which funds research and support for cancer. It has revolutionized how people move through what used to be a deadly disease for everyone. Okay? 
And, and maybe that's not your thing, but there is a way that your vision of health for yourself blesses others. If you're a grandparent, imagine how much of a blessing it would be if you could babysit your grandchildren while your kids go on a date. Some of you do that, right? Mm -hmm. Or what if it just is the difference between being able to lift that child up and hold him or her in your arms? without limitation. That blesses others. Maybe you could take your elderly neighbor's dog for a walk. I don't know what it is, but your vision of health for you is not just about you. It blesses other people. And when we start to ask ourselves those questions, the, the information is revealed to us. Okay, the same thing with wealth. What is your vision for wealth? Who would like to win the lottery? Okay, yeah. That's what we think of, right, the big bucks. Well, if only, okay, well, are you playing? Are you buying a ticket? <laughs> if you don't play, you won't win. But there's all kinds of other things. Everyone has a vision for wealth. No matter how opulent your money situation is, everyone has a vision for wealth that's greater than what we're experiencing in this moment. 